Good morning and welcome to our virtual experience at St. Luke Amy Church in downtown Hollywood. It's time for our virtual church school with Sister Bernell Smith, our church school superintendent. Good morning, good morning to my St. Luke family this morning. We give God thanks and we give God praise. If you have your books with you this morning, turn to page 18 in this quarter lesson three, September 19, 2021. Our subject today is glorifying God. Our lesson scripture is coming from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. And our focus scripture is coming from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Our key verse reads this morning, then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Mark chapter 10 verses 51. Looking at Mark chapter 10, 46, 52, New Revised Standard Version, we're going to read those uh, scriptures this morning. And then it says that they came to Jericho as he and his disciple and a large crowd were leaving Jericho and Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his clock, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way, on the way. So here you see that Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, he was asking God to restore his sight because he wanted to see again. So when he heard that Jesus was coming, so you see, it wasn't where uh, he, he was wondering if Jesus could. Uh, it wasn't like he was hoping uh, that Jesus could do it at that time. He knew that Jesus knew all about him. See, when we feel to ourselves that, you know, we have to um, stand out in the crowd and, and confess to everything that is going on in our lives, find your secret corner and just talk to Jesus and Jesus alone. Because Jesus wants you to know that nothing goes unnoticed in your life. And see, um, Bartimaeus was a man that knew Jesus, uh, that he knew that Jesus would have restored his sight. But not only that he knew, felt like Jesus would have restored his sight if he asked him, but Jesus also could feel the faith that this man had in him. You see, he said, if we just have the faith as small of a mustard seed, yes, yes. If we just have that little faith, even if as small as a mustard seed. So then here, Barnabas, Bartimaeus knew God for himself. When he heard that he was coming and when he got to Jericho, and when he heard that he was there, he raced among the crowds to where he was so loud because he was calling on the Lord mercifully. 
Sometime when we're in our secret closet at night, sometime when we're on our knees in our home at night, in a room all by ourselves, we are loud because we're calling on Jesus and Jesus alone. Only Jesus could have done it for Bartimaeus. Only Jesus could have restored his, his sight. When you bow down on your knees and you say, Lord Jesus, call on his name loudly. That's what Jesus is looking for, your heart. And when Bartimaeus got to him, Jesus asked him a question. What is it that you would have for me to do for you? See, you have to go to Jesus for yourself. What is it that you would have me to do for you? He asked him to have mercy on him and restoring his sight. He wanted to see again. So when Jesus restored his sight, let him know that his sight was restored because of his faith. Believe God would make a way. Believe God would do any and everything but fail. Believe God that he'll work it out for you, no matter what it is. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Then Jesus said to him, what would you have for me to do for me? And immediately when his sight was gained, he followed Jesus. Oh yes, he followed Jesus. So in this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about blindness. There's two kinds of blindness. In our introduction, it says physical and spiritual blindness are on display here. In this lesson, one is obvious and readily acknowledge. Yes, you can acknowledge when a person is blind, cannot see, physically blind and cannot see. You see that they wear like dark glasses. Um, because their eyes are like pinned down or either they're, they have a walking stick that help them move, make sure they don't walk over anything that got their guide them stuff with that stick, making sure nothing is in the way because they cannot see it with their physical sight. They cannot, cannot see what's in the front of them. So they take that walking stick. So it's obvious that that's a blind man there. Yes, when you tell them to come to you, uh, they can't find you right away because they're blind. They cannot see where you're located. Go move something or put something back or go get something is what you tell them and they cannot locate that because they are physically blind. So it is obvious and we acknowledge that that person is blind. They have to have someone to lead them, you know, walk with them where they need to go, assist them at all times. And then the other is unnoticeable and unacknowledged. Ah, spiritual blindness. Yes, yes, yes. Spiritual blindness. That's right. It's unnoticeable, unknowledged. Because they they can't see that God is waiting on them. Spiritual blindness. Can't you see God's arms are wide open and waiting on you? Turn from your wicked ways, he says, and he will heal the land. Yes. Yes. Today. People are not wearing their mask. Yes, they're not wearing their mask. They're not washing their hands. They're not taking heed to the word in Second Corinthians, letting us know that we, we must be shut up for a while. Yes, yes, spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness. Can't you see that God is trying to get our attention here? Yes, we're living all sorts of way, you know, our lives are, turn upside down and doing just whatever we feel like doing. God is trying to get our attention here. Spiritual blindness. Can't you see? There's a famine in the land. Can't you see? Yes. Turn back to God. 
turn back to God. Only God can do. Only God can do it for you. Yes. Turn back to God. Turn away from your wicked way of living. Spiritual blindness. God arms are wide open waiting on you. Call on him. Ask him to have mercy on you. Help you turn away from your wicked ways. Help you turn away from the way that you're living your life. Yes, turn to God. He's right there waiting on you. And it says for both, Jesus is the source of healing. His purpose in doing so is to glorify God. Yes, glorify God. When this happened, where you call on the name of Jesus and asking Jesus to have mercy on you like this blind man. He wants to tell everybody about it after a while. Telling everybody about the goodness of the Lord. Glorify God. Glory to God. Glorifying God. Oh, yes. And then it says, it goes on to say this will, that this will be Jesus' final trip to Jerusalem before he's crucified. However, as they are leaving the city of Jericho, they were unexpectedly interrupted by uh, Bartimaeus, a man with a physical blindness who cries out to Jesus for mercy. Don't let him pass you by. There's a song that said, don't let him pass you by. Jesus is waiting with his arms open wide. Don't let him pass you by. This was his last trip to Jerusalem before he was crucified. Bartimaeus, yes, yes, he was on time. He didn't let him pass him by. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Don't wait till you, you can't talk to him. Don't wait until all the chips are down. Don't wait until you get a position. Ah, oh, Jesus is still standing there with his arms open wide. Yes, he can reach way down and pick you up. But don't wait until you get to that point in your life to acknowledge Jesus. Take those scales off your eyes. See Jesus and Jesus alone. So here when the blind man came in and in this Bible story, here. It says Jesus has tried to prepare the disciples for what lies ahead in Jerusalem, but they still focus on belief that Jesus' life and power would be dedicated to overturning the Roman government powers. Some competitiveness for more power exists among the disciples. Just before their arrival in Jericho, G James and John asked for a seat on either side of Jesus when he comes into the glory. Jesus, however, retaliates his mission and the purpose for his ministry. Yes. Yes, James and John wanted to make sure they were sitting on both sides for even the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve but to serve and to give his life as a ransom Yes. Subsequently, Bartimaeus is encountered. Yes. Bartimaeus cried out for mercy. Bartimaeus begging was Bartimaeus' vocation. He most likely to sit by the this busy roadside and beg every day. Every day he begs. But that day, yes, that day, he heard that Jesus was coming. Could you only imagine how he felt there? Physical movements and labor that people with physically blindness could not perform. It is obvious that Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus and had faith in his healing power. Note that Bartimaeus referred to Jesus as the son of David and as rabbi or teacher, son of David referred to as Jesus divinities and roles as the Messiah referring to Jesus as Rabbi indicates acknowledgement of Jesus as a religious authority to be respected as Jesus spoken person although he is rebuked 
from making noise as he seeks Jesus' attention, Bartimaeus persists. He is determined to get Jesus' attention, even though the crowd told him, hush, yes. But you remember that song and say, hush, somebody is calling my name. Didn't Jesus call his name? Yes. Didn't Jesus say, bring him to me? He didn't call his name out. But he, Jesus acknowledged him. Yes. Somebody is calling my name. Oh, yeah. And Barnabas, Bontemius, wanted them to know that Jesus was calling his name. When they was telling him, hush. He was telling them, hush. Jesus is calling my name. I must go. Oh, yes. Because he was in a need of a healing that no man could have given him. Yes. Isn't God good? He was in need of a healing that no man could have given him. Yes. So he did not pay them any attention. Sometimes we have to just not pay those ones attention when they're trying to tell us, if I was you, I would not. You know? Sometimes we have to fall out of the tradition to get closer to God. Oh, yes. Yes, Pontemius didn't worry about what they were saying, that he was too noisy, that he was, you know, making too much noise. Ah, I got to get to Jesus and Jesus alone because I heard about the goodness of this man. I heard about him and I want him to heal me because I know he can do it. And then I can glorify Jesus. Oh, yes. He was glorifying Jesus just to know who he was and what he could have done. He was all, already glorifying Jesus. Oh, yes. Get those scales off our eyes. See Jesus. Yes, yeah, see Jesus. No matter what it is, see Jesus. Oh, yes, see Jesus. Jesus saw Bartimaeus differently than his contemporaries. He was worthy of Jesus' full attention, healing powers, and ultimately leaving the margin of society to go mainstream as Jesus' followers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus knew the heart of Bartimaeus. He knew Bartimaeus' heart. And he, right then, when he said Jesus saw Bartimaeus differently than his contemporaries differently, he was worthy of Jesus. Be worthy of Jesus. Yes. Let Jesus look at you as being worthy. Yes, worthy. Healing powers and ultimately leaving the margin of society to go to mainstream as Jesus' follower. Jesus knew that Bartimaeus would have followed. Yes. Because he knew the heart of him. Oh, yes. He knew the heart of him. The people look at him, looked at Bartimaeus for years because he had figured it was something that went on with his family, that they did some wrong, some sin. But Jesus was looking to perform a miracle. Is it you? Uh, is it you? That he would use to perform a miracle. Yes. You don't know your place. Seek God and find your place with him. Yes, Bartimaeus was part of God's miracle. Yes, he showed the people that he can make the blind man see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Find your place with God today. Yes, find your place. The well-known beloved song, Amazing Grace, was born out of deliverance from spiritual blindness. Amazing Grace, how sweet the song, to save a wretch like me. Oh yes, I was once was lost. Yes, I once was blind, but now I see. Yes, isn't God good? Amazing Grace. And once was blind, 
once was blind, couldn't see, couldn't see that the people that I was around was not good for me, couldn't see those friends that I thought was there was not good for me. I couldn't see that what I was doing to my body was not good for my soul. I couldn't see. Isn't God good? I couldn't see. Spiritual blindness. You couldn't see. And then one day, I heard about Jesus. I learned about Jesus, knowing about all the goodness of the Lord. And I wanted to know more and more about Jesus. And I gave my heart to him. Yes. Isn't God good? Amazing grace. Glorify God. Was blind, but now I see. I see that no one could put that lamp in that pathway for me and a light at my feet, but Jesus. Isn't God good? Yes, isn't God good? So we're going to go to our closing at this time. Our closing devotion. It says, Dear Lord, as we close the discussion, please bless us by closing, examining, closely examining us. Spiritual blindness is always a threat to our relationship with you. Jesus taught that if we abide in him and he abides in us, we can be fruitful. Lord, we want to be fruitful and to glorify you in everything we do. Please bless me, bless us to be whom you have called us to be individually and collectively. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Tune in again next Sunday morning for our virtual church school. Stay locked in because coming up at 1030 is our hour of power worship services.